Welcome back, Cloud Scholars. I hope everyone has, out there is having a grand day. So this is the second part, right? In this video uh, for the Data Lifecycle Management Series, uh, the first video we talked about adaptive scopes. Um, in this video, we're going to touch on um, doing uh, retention labels and then also retention policies in this video. I'm um, also going to show you um, and talk a little bit about disposition reviews and then also a little bit uh, within the realm of records management with um, event types. So hopefully you have your Microsoft Purview portal open like I do. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to solutions and I'm going to go to data lifecycle management. Now, hopefully you are in the new portal uh, screen. Um, we have to get used to it. I know that we're all thinking to ourselves, Microsoft's constantly making changes. But at the end of the day, the foundation is still still the same. So um, we just got to deal with it, right? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into policies, right? Actually, sorry, we're going to go into retention labels. And then when you get into retention labels, you have this screen that pops up. You can create a label, you can publish a label, and all this other stuff. Um, just so you know, when you create a label, you have to publish it as well. And I will get into that in a little more detail um, later on in this video. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a label. And we're going to call this label seven years. And we'll just do something like executive team. Uh, you can have a description for your user if you want to. We're not going to do any description. Or you can have a description for our admins if you want to. We, we don't need to do a, a description for admin. This is just a tutorial. But obviously, if you are in your environment, I would definitely urge you to be doing these descriptions because if you have a bunch of labels up there, you know, sometimes the name itself won't just give you all the information. It can be very uh, confusing. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on next. Now here, when it comes to retention uh, labels, uh, I do want to go quickly to a PowerPoint slide that's kind of go through what these options are, this retained item for, for a specific period of time, uh, enforce actions as a specific period of time, or just label items. So when it comes to retention labels, right, um, there's really two main actions, right? Uh, retain content, right? Uh, prevent permanent deletion and remain available for such things like uh, e-discovery or delete content, permanently delete content from your organization. So here are some of the outcomes for retention policies, right? Uh, retention labels. Uh, you can retain content forever or for a specific period of time. You can delete. Uh, permanently delete content after a specific period of time, or you can retain and then delete, retain content for a specific period of time, and then permanently delete it as well. And the the two, the second and third option do sound very similar to me. Um, this is you can get all this information from the Microsoft page as well. So retentions work with content in place, right? So when content has retention settings assigned to it, that content remains in its original location. If a user edits or deletes the content that's included in the retention policy, a copy of the content is automatically retained. For SharePoint and OneDrive sites, the copy is retained in the preservation hold library. For Exchange mailboxes, the content is retained in the recoverable items folder. And for Teams, Viva Engage messages, and interaction with Microsoft 365 Copilot and Microsoft Copilot, the copy is retained in a hidden folder named Substrate Holds as a subfolder in the Exchange Recovery Items folder. So as I said before, we're going to be doing retention labels and retention policies in this video, um, but there is a difference, right? So a retention policy uh, to assign the same retention sets for the content at a site or mailbox level. So that is what a retention policy is going to do, right? A retention label is going to assign retention sets at an item level, like folder, document, or email. So I just want to re-emphasize, right, this is very important. Um, unlike retention policies, retention settings from retention labels travel with the content if it's moved to a different location within your Microsoft 365 tenant. So you will probably want to apply policies, right, at the SharePoint level, at a site level, so on and so forth. But if something is extremely important, you want to make sure that just in case that content gets moved to another location, you should have a label associated with it as well. Okay, so let's go back over to the purview screen and let's see. Retain items for a specific period of time, right? So we can come here and let's see what we get. We say, uh, specify how long the retention period should be. Uh, retain items for seven years if you wanted to. You can also say, start the retention place based on a certain event. So when items were created, when items were last modified, when items were labeled, also employee activity, 
expiration of termination, expiration, excuse me, expiration of termination of contracts and agreements or product lifetime. So these event types that are here, where you can find them, you can also create your own event type if you wanted to here. You could put your name in the description and call it a day. Or we can also, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go over into solutions. I'm going to go into records management. And then over here, events. I'm going to go manage event types. And over here, I'm going to click create event type. And I'm going to say something like acquisition finalized, right? We're looking to purchase a new company and we need to keep it on the hush hush. So only certain individuals are going to know about it. And we want to make sure that after we do the acquisition that we keep the events after a certain period of time. So I can say um, description. So this is a friendly description. Um, this is this is for the big acquisition, right? And then I click on next and then I could click on submit. Once that's done, click on done. Now you see here we have acquisition finalized and then we also have our description there. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to come back out of this, cancel out of this. I'm going to come back to create label. Um, I think if I had seven years, executive team, something like that. Uh, we left that blank. I'm going to come back here, retain item for a specific period of time. Um, and then I can say, down here and I can see right here acquisition finalized. So now you see how that is created. Now, if I were to go to one of the other options and force actions after this period of time, I could say, all right, I could say, how long is this period? I could say seven years and when should the period begin? When items were created, when items were last modified and when items were labeled. So um, with this setting, you don't have as much, you, don't, you can't do with the event types. Um, I definitely wanted to just show you that if I click on next, then you have the option of delete items automatically. And then you have the option of change the label. So you can extend the policy and choose an existing label. So you could change it to a different label, which may have some other uh, type of configurations you wanna apply to it. And if I do delete items automatically and I go to finish, I can go ahead and do that. But what I wanna show you as well is I can also just label the item, right? If I wanted to, and then no action is required, or if I want to go here, because remember, after the acquisition, we still need to keep that information and we have seven years as our name of our label. I can say, all right, I'm going to do is acquisition finalized. I'm going to say start retention based on this time period. So after that time period, those documents that are labeled are going to be kept for that long. Um, and then seven years. And then it says, choose what happens after the retention period. These settings determine what happens to items when the retention period ends. So delete items automatically will permanently remove labeled items from whatever they're stored. We could start a disposition review as well. So let's talk a little bit about disposition reviews. So when it comes to uh, disposition reviews, re disposition reviews is an option that we all have available, right? That Microsoft provides to us uh, to uh, review some type of document, right? Um, once it hits a certain threshold. So for instance, with our case, after seven years, who is going to say, okay, what do we do with this, uh, these documentation? Now, some companies will want to delete things because now they don't have it and they have any policies like, hey, we're going to delete things after a certain amount of time. And the reason why they do that is because of legal reasons, right? They don't want to be held accountable for certain things that they've done. So they delete it and it's totally legal, right? Um, so that is one of the reasons why you might want to say, let's do a disposition review. Other reasons is because you want to have somebody do a final okay before you go ahead and you delete. So you might say, hey, let's do a disposition review on these documents after a year um, and see exactly what we want to do depending on the state of the company. So one thing I do want to point out as well is there are certain things you should know about disposition reviewers, right? Uh, global admins do not have access to the dispositions feature. They need to be granted permissions like everyone else. Right, just because you're a global admin does not mean you have access. Um, you don't need access to SharePoint site, OneDrive, Exchange, Mailbox, where the pending disposition is located to approve the disposition. Also, adding an additional reviewer during the review process does not automatically grant them permission to the disposition page. And if a reviewer is removed from a disposition stage or leaves the organization, any pending items assigned to them remain. 
So if somebody left, they're no longer working there, those items are still remaining there and they will still need to be reviewed by someone. So we can start a disposition review, right? If I click here, I can create stage and assign reviewers, right? So I can do all types of stuff here. I'm not gonna get into that too much uh, when it comes to disposition reviews, I will probably create another video um, more around records management and talk about disposition reviews and then also event types and all that other stuff. Um, we can change a label, like that was the option in the other um, uh, setting that we had. So you could change label, you could choose a replacement label as well if you want to, or you could deactivate retention settings, right, settings, right? Um, as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete items automatically, right? So what we're gonna do is click on next, and then we're gonna create our label. So here we have the option, right? So we could publish this label to Microsoft 365 locations. We could auto apply this label to a specific type of content if we wanted to, or we could do nothing, right? So you can publish this label to 365 locations. Um, what I'll do is I'll do nothing for now and click on done. And there is our label, right? But our label is not published. So if we click here, right, we can go ahead, we could publish our label as well. So if I click on here, choose labels to publish right here. Um, if I click next, I can add an admin scope if I wanted to. I can do uh, adaptive scope. Remember we talked about this in the other uh, video or we could do a static one. You'll choose locations, the content you wanna retain. So if I do adaptive scope, I can now write down here is, is completely blanked out. I can't do anything. I have to do my scope. If I did static, right, statically assigned it, now I have these options and I can now do uh, all mailboxes or I can do SharePoint Classic, um, uh, and community sites, OneDrive accounts, Microsoft 365. Now the thing is I wanna keep in mind, right? Remember when we were talking about adaptive scopes? You know, I mentioned earlier the good thing about adaptive scopes is because it has a query associated with it. So, you know, with the static locations, if something does change or if you, you know your organization, if they aren't really good at, you know, um, spreading information in terms of who's moving where, you know, uh, updating uh, attributes, you know, you might want to go with the adaptive scope and then you do a query and try to uh, make it make sense, right? You want to make sure that you have a query that, you know, is able to capture your organization and what's going on so you could keep things safe. So if I go to adaptive scope and I click on my scope, and this is a scope we created in a previous video, data protection executive team, and I click add, now I have an option to uh, choose locations to apply the policy, right? Exchange mailbox and OneDrive accounts, so on and so forth. I could go ahead and click next, and I can name my policy if I want to name my policy, right? So I could now say this is uh, seven, seven year plan and I could click on next and I hit submit. All right, so next we're gonna do is we're gonna go into retention policies and go ahead and create one of those, right? So next we're gonna do is we're gonna click on new retention policies and in retention policies, what we're gonna do is uh, seven year retention policy. Uh, we're not gonna do anything with admin units. So we have this option for adaptive scope as well, right? So if I go to adaptive scope, you can see what we can add here. There's a lot of information here. So if I add scope and I do data protection executive team, I could do that. And now I have the option, automatic comes with exchange and also OneDrive, but it also gives me option for other areas as well, teams, private channels, so on and so forth, right? But for this one, we're gonna do is we're gonna go with static. So over here is where you can choose where to apply the policy, right? So over, what you can do is you can go into a specific mailbox. If you click edit, it's going to bring up a window where you can open specific mailboxes. If you want to do all and exclude certain mailboxes, you can do that as well. Down here, SharePoint Classic and Communication Sites, you can do that also. Now, if you had an adaptive scope already set out for the sites that you wanted to have this set up on, you wouldn't have this option. Uh, you would just have gone to adaptive scopes to do that. Um, and then OneDrive accounts, you can do all as well. And then you can do all or edit to exclude certain accounts as well. And then down here, you have the option to tag toggle off uh, any of these other settings that you want to apply as well. So we'll leave it as that. And then we have the option to retain items for a specific period of time. 
uh, retain items for a specific period of time, maybe seven years, what we called it. We could do seven years, we could do 10 years, you could do a custom one as well. So you do custom, it gives you the option. Uh, we'll leave it at seven years because that's our policy name. Uh, you can start retention based on a period, right? So when items were created and then when items were last modified. So we're going to go with last modified. So we could do nothing or we could delete items automatically or you can have this option to retain items forever or only delete items when they reach a certain age. So items that are older than seven years, when content gets, uh, delete content based on items that are created or last modified. Um, so it's kind of the same thing, right? Um, so over here, we'll just leave it at seven years, delete items when last modified, and then we're gonna delete items automatically, right? And then we click on next. So it says items that are currently older than seven years will be deleted after you turn on this policy. This is especially important to note for location scope to all sources. For example, all Teams chats, because all matching items to these locations across your organization will be permanently deleted. So it's giving you a message letting you know, hey, you have set every item to be deleted and that is exactly what we're going to do. So if I click on submit, all right, so that is it. We have created our retention policy. So, you know, I hopefully that, you know, at the end of this video, things in Microsoft Purview make a little bit more sense. You know, as you continue your road through uh, learning Microsoft and the different products, you'll realize that a lot of them are isolated. You can, you can use them by themselves, but then they also have a relationship with other uh, tools as well, right? So in this uh, video, we in, in this series, I should say, we talked a little bit about, you know, adaptive scopes, how that looked. Also talked about uh, event types with your Microsoft uh, purview. We also mentioned... Um, uh, disposition reviews we did a bit of the things about labels and then also label policies so please if you have any questions or anything like that uh, please leave it in the comment section i really love to hear from the audience let me know what you're working on if this video helped you out um i have been getting a lot of positive reviews i do uh, hope that you all would like um and subscribe and also share right it helps me with my algorithm and stuff like that um, and if you're just having any questions about Microsoft or anything of that nature, um, love to talk about Microsoft ecosystem and technology uh, overall. So I want to thank you all uh, for watching this video and taking the time out of your busy day. Uh, once again, my name is Kieran Tross. Um, here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.